Uh, so Charles Barkley was talking this weekend. And last week, uh, it was just kind of a crazy, crazy story. Russell Westbrook uh, gets traded, obviously, to the Houston Rockets. Uh, I don't think it's going to work, uh, it, at least long term. I, you, you can make any relationship work initially. There's the new, fresh car smell of any relationship, and it works. Um, but, but Charles Barkley was talking about the, the biggest issue with Westbrook playing with James Harden. James Harden is going to control the ball because James Harden is the better player. James Harden averages 35 a game. James Harden, this is his city and his team and his franchise and his offense. He's not changing, nor should he. Kobe in his prime, when Shaq left, that was Kobe's team. It was up to Pal Gasol to figure out, and Pal was an all-star, how are you going to play with Kobe? James Harden analytically is the best player in the NBA offensively. Annoying to watch, drives you nuts. He's not changing. This is his franchise, his offense, his team, and his city. And he ran Chris Paul out of town. Um, so that's the first thing. Second thing is Westbrook's game is his game. He's not a pure shooter. But one of the things I hear talked about a lot, and I can only speak for men. I will not speak for women. I will just speak for how guys' brains work. Um, if you're the best in the world at something and you have a rigid personality, you will not get flexible. <laughs> this is not a basketball question. It's a personality question. Let me ask everybody watching. Anybody in your life, rigid, brother, dad, sister, friend, boss, if I gave them $150 million, would they become less rigid? No, they wouldn't, would they? Again, I'm speaking for guys. Can't speak for women. The whole they get along their best friends, it doesn't matter with guys because guys' careers generally speaking, are really important to their ego and their vanity. And when we get into the sweet spot in our careers and you're paying us a lot of money, we're not making a lot of sacrifices even for our best friend. And I don't know if these guys are best friend, but the word is they want to play with each other. Never forget this. Paul George and Westbrook were friends. George bailed on him. Carmelo and Chris Paul were friends. Chris Paul didn't like him. Harden and Chris Paul weren't best friends, but... All the stories, I went back yesterday and read them, said they got along, they couldn't stand each other. So what the, the whole friends argument to me is fun. I just read a story this morning about how Houston wants to make it work from the Houston Chronicle. Coach Mike Don Tony is going to stagger his stars so Harden and uh, Westbrook will likely share the court for less than half the game. Oh, okay. So your game plan going in is we hope they don't play together that much. It also says later in this story, this is all going to require Harden to be agreeable to being off the ball more often. He is not going to allow his game, 36 a game, to change dramatically. His team, his offense, his city, his ego, his check. He's not... Listen, friends can accommodate other friends, but the way guys work when they're in the prime of their professional career, I'll give you solid, but don't get in the way of my game, and I'm not sacrificing for you. Find me an all-star in his prime, one in NBA history, that came into a team as the second best player and forced the one to change his game. Now you'll say, well, Steph and KD. Steph didn't change his game. Steph just shot less. It, Steph didn't play a different position. Steph said, I'll take two and a half shots less a game. Give Kevin Durant two of my shots a game. Didn't change his game. We're asking Westbrook, go play another position. What? Now, LeBron in his 17th year, stacks of money, stacks a ring, legacy solved. None of those, you know, Westbrook doesn't have the legacy in the rings. LeBron will probably acquiesce a little and do some point guard stuff this year. But LeBron's always been an incredible ball handler outside of Magic Johnson, probably the best ball handler for his size I've ever seen. You're asking Westbrook to do something he does poorly. LeBron doesn't do anything poorly. Maybe not a very good defender now. You're asking Westbrook, hey, stack some money. Off guard. I just don't, I just don't see it working. Uh, I, I do think when you acquire D'Angelo Russell, Russell Westbrook, I like to have talented players because I think Westbrook will score a bunch of points and you'll eventually be able to move him. And I do like the fact they're, they, they, they do like each other. I think you're, you're more willing to put your head down and ignore strife if it is a buddy. But um, this is not a basketball question. It is a personality question.
find rigid people, give them $150 million, they don't get less rigid, even if they're playing with their friends. You have no idea. Privately, there's been a lot of hand-wringing, I've been told, over the last nine months to a year in the NBA about this load management thing. Listen, I love going to NBA games. Tickets are expensive. Family of four can run you $800, parking, blah, blah, blah. LeBron, as he is age, kind of kick-started the load management, and then Kawhi took the baton and took it to 22 games. Let me tell you something. Owners don't like this, and the commissioner doesn't like it, and he's trapped. The commissioner came out a couple of weeks ago and said, you know what, we should play 56 games. They're not going to reduce it to 56 games. That is 66. That's like 25 fewer games. You're going to tell me every owner is going to give you 12 home games? Uh, that's not going to happen. <laughs> that's not going to happen. And now you got all these duo teams in the league. People want stars cycling through their arenas, the, the owner slash governor of the league. And so this is one of these situations where Steph came out and said, I, I'm going to play. And AD came out and said, I'm going to play. LeBron James, as he's gotten older, by the way, LeBron used to play every game. LeBron James, as he is aged, took a few days off and called it load management. But in the end, it's bad for business and it's bad optics. Football players play hurt. Hockey players play hurt. Uh, soccer players generally, by the way, baseball players generally want to play. Uh, pitchers sometimes you know, go to the IR, but baseball players' numbers are often based on totals. So they don't want to give up games. Mike Trout got hurt yesterday. He wants to finish the game. They want to get their totals, their RBI, their home run, their runs batted, and all that stuff. So th 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 this doesn't seem like a big deal uh, by Anthony Davis saying, I want to play, and Steph Curry saying, I want to play. It is a big deal behind the scenes it's bad optics uh, I'm you know Adam Silver listen to LeBron LeBron said give us a longer all-star break I, I'm, I'm okay with that fewer back-to-backs I'm okay with that I think this league is incredibly demanding on players uh, but the load management thing is just not good business at all and so when Anthony Davis comes out and says no I'm gonna play the games that is a massive sigh of relief for Adam Silver hi everybody thanks for watching subscribe here to get the latest from the show also, be sure to check out more of the best clips from The Herd or go watch a few segments from other shows on FS1.